Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. Guys, this is the timetable for RBI, SEBI and NABARD. And this is our mobile application which you can download from the Play Store. So here we have the very first question which is, which of the following applications was launched by the central government in July 2022 to spread awareness about the Swachh Sagar, Surakshit Sagar campaign? So here guys, the right answer is option B, Eco Mitra. Now, there would be a question in your mind that why are we discussing about an application which was launched in July. So here the reason is that this campaign, which was a 75 day campaign, it started in July and it was to end on September 17, which is the International Coastal Cleanup Day. And on the occasion of that day, this uh, campaign has also ended and the mention of this application was also there. That is why it is important for you to know about an initiative of the government or uh, the application of the government. Okay, so let's move into the details. So as I have already told you that the central government had launched the Swachh Sagar, Surakshit Sagar campaign in July and at that time the Eco Mitram application was also launched. The purpose of this application was to inform the public about this campaign as well as uh, allow or facilitate the volunteers who want to register themselves for cleaning the beaches. So they can use this application to register themselves. So these are the two purposes for which this application was launched in July. And now we can see that on 17th September, the International Coastal Cleanup Day was celebrated. So this campaign has also ended on that day. And it's not a very distant or uh, old news, you can say. Now coming to this uh, campaign, so it is also about spreading the awareness among the masses for uh, promoting the cleaner beaches. So that is the basic idea. And it is only written here that it is a 75 day campaign. Now guys, one more thing. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi's birth anniversary is on 17th September. And all of you must have heard about this as well, that this day is celebrated as Seva Divas. If you hadn't known this fact, from now onwards, I would expect all of you to remember this day as Seva Divas because this is important because it is a part of your general awareness. You should be knowing this fact that the birth anniversary of our current Prime Minister is celebrated as Seva Divas. Now, whose birth anniversary do we celebrate as Sadhbhavana Divas? This is your question. Do tell me in the comment section below. Coming back to this news. So on this Seva Divas, we have brought cheetahs from Namibia. So this is also important and you must have seen the memes of Prime Minister Modi being compared to cheetahs because of his birth anniversary and the uh, coincidence of bringing the cheetahs on his birth anniversary. So that meme will help you in remembering that on the Seva Divas, these project cheetahs, cheetah was executed and eight cheetahs were brought in India. The next question is what is the route of India's longest river cruise service? So here Varanasi and Bogi Bill is the right answer. So Varanasi is in Uttar Pradesh and Bogi Bill is in uh, Assam. So through this, uh, basically in order to cover the distance between these two cities, the cruise service will be launched. So this cruise service will sail through Ganga, Indo-Bangladesh protocol route and Brahmaputra. So these three rivers are going to be covered. Now this route is basically the sea route, the inland waterways route that goes through Bangladesh. Okay, So we are transiting the territory of Bangladesh to enter the northeast part. So that is the Indo-Bangladesh protocol route and this allows India and Bangladesh to conduct trade and it also gives us the better opportunity to connect with the northeastern state because we know that Siliguri corridor is uh, very thin and if a war is ensued between India and China, then that would be the target area where China would uh, hit us. Okay, So in order to pre prevent that situation, we have uh, partnered with Bangladesh so that we can have a broader connectivity with the northeastern region. So that is the basic idea behind this Indo-Bangladesh protocol route. So this is the trade route between India and Bangladesh that goes between through the Bangladesh. Now, apart from this, Two floating jetties will be established in Bogibil. 
which is in Dibruga district and Guijan in Tinsukia district. Okay. Next question is recently Union Minister for Education and Skill Development Dhanendra Pradhan has launched the Scale app to provide a one-stop solution for the skilling, learning, assessment and employment needs of the leather, leather industry. What does A stand for in Scale? So here guys, A stands for Assessment. Scale refers to Skill Certification Assessment for Leather Employees. Okay. So this skilling application has been launched in order to provide one single platform wherein the employees or everyone involved in the leather industry can take uh, the skilling courses, can take the training courses and can get the certificates. And the platform will also fulfill the employment needs of the leather industry because through this platform, the leather industry, the employers will also get to know about the aspiring youth so they can hire them as well. Okay. Leather Skill Sector Council has developed this scale portal. Moving on to the next question, by which year has the Ministry of Civil Aviation announced to make over 90 airports carbon neutral? Now, this is a very important news and it would be your static GK news as well because this is a target of the government. However, we cannot say anything if in the future the government changes this target and increase it or decrease it. But as of now, you need to remember that the government is going to make over 90 airports in India carbon neutral. So here guys, the target for that is 2024. This is a very short, simple Sada news that is 90 airports are going to be made uh, are going to be transformed into the carbon neutral airports by 2024 and there are going to be 220 airports in the next five years okay by 2024 to 2025 we will have 20 uh, 220 airports in india now as related to airports we have afsa scheme of the airports authority of india tell me the full form of it one more thing that the cochin international airport was the first solar airport now, which airport is the first solar airport of Airports Authority of India? This is your next question. Do tell me the answer of both the questions in the comment section below. The next question is, which state has approved a proposal for issuing a letter of intent to Adani Ports and Special Economic Zone for development of a green uh, field deep sea port at Tajpur? at an investment of rupees 25,000 crores. So here guys, West Bengal is the right answer. So West Bengal has granted this approval to the Adani ports and special economic zone for development of the Greenfield Deep Sea port. Now the news in itself is not very important. However, the distinction between the Greenfield projects and the Brownfield projects is important. I hope all of you are aware of it. Greenfield projects are the projects which start from the scratch okay whereas the brownfield projects are the projects which uh, do not start from the uh, scratch but they are the extension or they are basically the rejuvenation of the existing uh, you can say project okay for example we have an existing airport now if we expand the existing airport by adding facilities or terminals into it then that would be called as a brownfield project okay because they in that project, we are not constructing an airport from the scratch level. We are just rejuvenating it, extending it and making it upgraded. So that is the basic distinction. Okay. INS Ajay was an Abhay class anti-submarine warfare corvette of Western Naval Command. When was the ship commissioned? So here guys, what is the right answer? The right answer is 1994. Okay, 1990 is the right answer. Okay, now INS Ajay was an Abhay class anti submarine warfare corvette of the Western Naval Command. It was commissioned in the Maharashtra side. Okay, so it was under the uh, you can say control of the Maharashtra naval area. So that side of the Indian Navy. Okay, it was commissioned in 1990. No need to remember the date. That is not important. Not even the year is important as of now because right now you are not having any kind of examination near you okay so you can skip the date but yes if you have any kind of examination like your fci pfrda or any banking examination coming up then this 
date the year is important okay at least you should be knowing uh, the year in which this INS Ajay was launched because it has been decommissioned recently so um, this uh, this INS Ajay was a part of the Maharashtra Naval Area again not a very important information so you can clearly skip this is just for your general awareness the next question is which bank has launched the pilot project for digitalizing the Kisan credit cards to facilitate agricultural loans in minutes in Tamil Nadu. So here guys federal bank is the right answer. Now federal bank has launched the project to digitalize the Kisan credit card and you must be aware of this fact that Kisan credit card basically offer the short term uh, loan to the farmers and that loan is of very minuscule amount as you can see here only rupees 1.6 lakh uh, is given as loans to the farmers and uh, this Kisan credit card is going to be digitalized by the federal bank and the purpose of this is to make the entire process very quick so that when a farmer has applied for the loan in just five minutes after that application the loan is sanctioned and the amount is uh, credited into the account of the farmer so that is the basic idea behind digitalizing the kisan credit card so that we can remove the delays and remember that federal bank has launched this in tamil Nadu. and guys this is an important uh, question i would say uh, and important news because this is about digitalization of the Kisan credit card. So this is, you can say, a structural change that we are bringing in a facility. That is why it is important for your examination. Plus, it is about the bank as well as agriculture related news. And you don't have your phase two examination announced as of now. So all the current affairs that are there in news as of now. Okay, you need to prepare them. You can expect a question out of them even in your phase 2 ESI or ARD paper. However, the proportion of the current affairs in your uh, ARD objective questions is very minuscule. But still, if one question is there from the current affairs and you have watched my video. So there is no sense in losing even that one mark. So do remember this question. Okay, except my wordings, what I'm telling you. So as I told you, the turnaround time has been reduced to five minutes after the digitalization of the Kisan credit card. And this entire initiative of digitalizing the Kisan credit card has been undertaken by the Reserve Bank Innovation Hub, which is a subsidiary of RBI. Now from here, I'm going to ask two questions from you. First of all, you all should be knowing that there are five subsidiaries of RBI. Name all of them in the comment section. below. Secondly, when did RBI establish this subsidiary? These two questions are very static questions as of now. Do tell me in the comment section below. I'm going to test your basic banking awareness. Now, one more news is related to the same Kisan credit card that Union Bank of India has also launched a digitalized version of the Kisan credit card, but in Madhya Pradesh. Federal Bank launched it in Tamil Nadu. Uh, Union Bank of India has launched it in Madhya Pradesh and the basic purpose is same again the Reserve Bank Innovation Hub has undertaken this activity okay to digitalize the Kisan credit card now here the unique point is that Union Bank of India has undertaken the digitalization of Kisan credit card under its project which is Sambhav so Sambhav is the digital transformation project under which this bank is transforming its uh, you can say facilities or uh, initiatives or whatever the bank offers all those facilities are being onboarded on the digital platform so the bank is trying to provide everything digitally to the customer so that the turnaround time time and every kind of structural delays can be reduced so this um, digitalization is also part of the digital transformation project of the bank which is named as samba do remember The next question is, who has been appointed as the non-executive part-time chairman of Yes Bank by RBI? So here, R. Gandhi is the right answer. Now guys, R. Gandhi was the former deputy governor of RBI and he has been appointed as the part-time chairman of Yes Bank for three years. Okay. The next question is, when was the international 
red panda day observed so here september 17 again the seva divas the international coastal cleanup day and now the red panda day all these three days are celebrated on one single date september 17 very important date okay now on this day the world uh, this wwf india and SBI Foundation, these two organizations have collaborated so that they can gather information, data about the pandas in India, red pandas in India. And uh, after gathering the information, they can take necessary steps for the protection of the pandas and their habitats. And these habitat, habitats are primarily located in, uh, you can say, Sikkim, Darjeeling, Kalimpong district of West Bengal. So Darjeeling and Kalimpong district our uh, districts are there in West Bengal. Now guys, recently we have discussed about one zoological park which is in Darjeeling. Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park which is the speciality or one of the most important habitats of the red pandas. Recently this zoo was classified as the number one zoo by the Central Zoo Authority. I hope you remember that news. Now we have heard about the Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park, which is named after Padmaja Naidu. But do you know who that person is? If you don't know, then find it out and mention it in the comment section below. For your information, let me inform you that she was a freedom fighter and later became the governor of a state. I have given you enough hints. Now you have to tell me uh, of which state she was the governor. Again, uh, if you are present in the video if you have the mind here only then you must have guessed the answer of this question itself okay the next question is who is the director of chelo show film so it is the gujarati film if i have mispronounced it this name then it's not my mistake i don't know uh, the gujarati language but hai. i apologize for that for the mispronunciation so this film is the nomination of india official nomination of india to the Oscars for 2023. So, who is the director? It is Pan Nalin. So, that is written only that this movie has got the Oscar, has become the India's official entry into the Oscars and it has beaten the movies like RRR. Okay. Now, guys, one more thing that I want to inform you about that Oscar. Uh, I hope you know that that Oscars are also known as Academy Awards and there are approximately 24 categories for which the awards are given in the Oscar ceremony and out of these 24 uh, categories do you know that only one category is there for the international feature film okay and for that one category all the countries all the you can say the woods around the world are fighting to get the Oscar in this one category. So that is the, you can say, prestige of this award is. And however, the award in itself is not a very big recognition, but the value that it generates in the international forum, in the international area, the, the attention that it grabs for the people, for the movie and for the industry, that is important. For example, you must have known about the South Korean movie, Parasite, which got the Oscar. And after getting the Oscar, the South Korean industry had a blast in the international area. Everyone, I guess, in India also, I have seen many people watching the Korean dramas, Korean movies. So we are having a fad of Korean uh, industry or Korean dramas. So that is the benefit of getting an Oscar. Let's hope that India would get an Oscar this year. On that note, I would like to end this video. I hope you have liked the video. Thank you so much for watching it.